welcome back to the training, Kev. Yeah, thanks. Uh, how's it been? It's been, been good, yeah. It's been, it's been manic lately. Yeah? Uh, yeah. We've got the boxing season underway and um, we've been very active with the fighters on weekends and, and the gym just it's gone through the roof in, in terms of the classes they've got. They've got very, very busy. Yeah. So talk to us about, obviously, the docu mini doc we did last time when we were here. Yeah, the, the documentary were brilliant. Um, thank you for that. I, were, I was surprised by it, to be honest with you. I think a lot of people were. Well, it's quite addictive. When, when I started watching it, you wanted to just keep watching it right to the end, and a lot of people have said that. Yes. Um, it was quite long. It was longer than I thought it would be, and a lot yep. of people watched it all the way through. And yep. Ever since then, the, it's just got busier and busier as the gym. Um, yep. And I think you saw last night, didn't you, how much of an impact. Oh my God, it was yeah. oh, so many it people, isn't it? I mean, I, I said to you at the end of the session, uh, well, when, I, when we were shutting up last night, that that was the first day since opening, like 18 months ago, that it felt like a proper, proper boxing gym, like an old school boxing gym. Yeah. Everybody helping each other out, the coaches there, uh, lads, were, the boxers were, were doing pad work with each other, the bag yeah. work, sparring, there were another club here um, doing some sparring as well, and it was just real good feel to it yeah the family everyone keeps talking about being a family atmosphere they keep saying it over no matter who you talk to yeah. family atmosphere and they're all i mean i don't know how much you're paying these kids <laughs> but they're telling <laughs> that you're that you're a great coach yeah. and you know family atmosphere and jack's taking me in and really looked after me not a bad word from nobody no. i try to slip someone a fiver and they they they, <laughs> they were having it, they were having it. <laughs> so no you got oh, jokes aside you've got a real great gym here yeah and it's testament to the hard work you've put in and the other trainers you've got here as well, yeah. that every person in this gym wants to be here, not just because yeah. they're, some of them are fighting, but some of them are here because it's family for them. Yeah, yeah I love that. I love that. I love that they feel that way. Yeah. yeah, I did want that kind of atmosphere. I didn't want it to just be a, um, a gym where people come and they just do their own thing. You know, um, when I first opened, my dad was sort of saying, I don't understand how this gym's going to work, but it wasn't going to be because if we were up to like say my dad was a bit more yeah. of a businessman it'd be like just get people in you know yeah. members i out about that you know i've seen i've seen that sort of atmosphere with gyms and i like to know everything about everybody i like to know yeah. a little bit about every kid that comes in every adult that comes in yes it's more personal and i think um i, I love it when they say family because like chris said in the documentary yes so a lot of the kids have got somewhere to come now on a night uh, if if they didn't before you know that he's given them that atmosphere yeah I, I, that family atmosphere is it's what, I wanted to, it's what I wanted to build, so it's nice to know that people feel that way. Yeah. Absolutely. One of the things that I felt in the first doc we didn't really get enough time to look at was girls boxing. So, yeah. so obviously, in this one come, upcoming yeah. uh, doc, yeah. we'll be looking a bit more at that. Talk to us about girls boxing and the importance of it. Yeah, um, I, I, we, we get a lot of girls in like as beginners classes. I'm, I'm trying, trying my best to maybe one day have, 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 have a fighter or a couple of girl fighters because there's definitely a place for them now. You know, there, there were a time when women's boxing won't big but it's growing and, the, and the, the girls are getting very very good you know you look at you look at the England setup and there's some top fighters on there and they're sparring with the lads um, and you look at the pros like Nicola Adams it, it's getting there and uh, it'd be nice to have one or two girls coming through but like you saw in the beginners we've got we've got quite a few yes Whether they're fully interested in actually fighting I don't think they are but maybe one day we'll have that one that'll come in and it'll pave that pave the way the yes yeah. absolutely you got a show coming up? Yeah, um, December 1st. It's his first first home show. Mm -hmm. yeah. So talk to me about it. Your first home show. Why December? Why now? Um, we got our first season done last season. Well, we had, we had half a season last season. We got six, six months of it. Um, this will be his first full one. And I just feel like I'm in the position now. We've got 16 medical cardio boxes. I've, got, I've built up contacts last season. I was taking fights all the time from anybody. Uh, we've done a lot of sparring with other gyms. I feel like I've built up enough contacts now to sort of get all the clubs in to set up this show. Um, the venue, Brain and Braun, I used to actually work there. It's a big gym, um, it's a fight gym. It's, it's a perfect venue. Um, plus, because I already know them, it's a lot easier to do. And yeah. I just feel like it's, it's time we did it. You know, people, people need to see what we've been doing. Um, we, we, like I said, we've been going 18 months. People need to see the fighters now, because we've been going all around the country. As all lads need to fight on their own show now, and it's time for the local people in the local village and stuff to see what we're all about. Okay. Uh, is it just going to be a boxing show? Is it going to be? Are you going to have music, entertainment, um, food? It's what? just boxing. Um, it, yeah, it's it, England boxing rules. 
there's a lot that you can do with a show, and a lot of people are saying to me, you want to get you know raffles and auctions on and all that sort yeah. of stuff. But it's my first show. I just want to go simple, just come in, watch the watch the boxing, and, and that be that. Just very simple. Maybe over time we'll do meal shows and we'll have guest speakers or whatever. But for now, it's just going to be amateur boxing and um, just come and watch the local talent. Yeah. Talk to me about the benefits of having cameras in your gym. Well, it's very old school yeah. uh, for everything to be locked away and behind yeah. closed doors and yeah. almost secretive. Why have you opened your doors to your gym? Um, I, I, I believe in it. The, the, the old, it is the world we live in now, isn't it? Social media and stuff like that. It's how, you, it's how I think businesses should be promoted. And with, with amateur boxing, I feel like it's very low key and, and under wraps and I wanted to bring it out there. You know, when I was just about to start this gym, it seemed to me that unlicensed boxing and uh, white collar charity boxing were getting really, really popular. And I started to think, why is that getting popular when the skill level is just rock bottom compared to these amateurs and professionals that are struggling to sell tickets? And what, what, what made it switch for me was I was with a lad um, at a championship somewhere in Sheffield, little working men's club, national championships, quarterfinals, and there were probably about 100 people in this working men's club. And I thought, these are like some of the best fighters in country and there's nobody watching them. That same night I went to a charity fight because one of my mates were fighting and there were thousands of people there. And this guy had only trained for eight weeks. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I, I yeah, just yeah, want yeah. people to see amateur boxing and what it's all about. It's KSI and uh oh, get me started. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk uh, to him about that. I mean uh, those guys got millions of yeah, views. And uh, and uh, fair play to them, but Yeah, but that, that's what I'm talking about, isn't it? They've been brought to the front with social media, it's YouTube, it's yeah. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, yeah. whatever they've done to build that. And now they're making that money. Why can't these kids that are training all the time, every single night, six days a week, seven days a week, they're paying six pounds to watch these lads fight on YouTube that have done barely any training. And a lot of these could stand them on their head. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it don't make sense to me. And it's how they've been marketed. They've marketed themselves well, and I yep. want to market these amateur boxers in that way. Not for my own benefit to make no. a lot of money, to, for, the, for the interest in them when they grow up to, to make money themselves. So, when you look at boxing, amateur boxing today and you wanted to change things or yeah. make adjustments, what are the adjustments you would make to make the amateur boxing scene more appealing? Um, I think in the, 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 everything's there. It's just... I think it's just the promotional side and getting it getting it to the front of people's minds and so people can see it. I'm sure we're back in there, it used to be like on ITV, like yeah, 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 yeah. Why that anymore? I, I just don't understand it. Some of the some of the some of the fighters that you see in the NBA finals are unbelievable, and they go on to represent GB and Olympics and stuff like that. Yeah, they should be seen. They should be. I, I I think it needs to be pushed, pushed, pushed. Whether it's social media, whatever. Social media is the best thing at the moment, so I think it needs to be pushed more. So the focus on amateur boxing. If you were to take the same focus you spent on professional boxing and amateur boxing, yeah. What do you think would happen? Um, amateur stars, for example. Yeah, I think you'd find that you'd get a lot less clubs moaning about money and not and not and struggling to keep open. Do you know what I mean? Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you, you do get, 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 get them struggling or, and, or they'll say there's no money in it and stuff like that. But, and, and I, I just think, you push it, you know, like, talk about it more to people and, and, and promote it. And it's the same. You, well, I see professional fighters and at the lower level, they've got to sell tickets themselves and they struggle to sell tickets. Yep. Why are they struggling to sell tickets when some of them have been ABA finalists, semi-finalists? It's because nobody knows them. And I think it's down to the amateur clubs to keep talking about them to keep putting stuff up about them these kids should be known so when they okay. turn pro selling tickets should be no problem so okay let, let's take this back a bit i'm here today with you doing yeah. the filming here yeah so people will want to know how how that's come about because they would think okay well you've you're fortunate you've had an opportunity to get somebody here to do filming yeah what would be your advice to people that were thinking about going down a similar route to what you're doing well in terms of getting somebody like you yeah um, I'd say go for it 100% because I can't prove it but you've only got to come into the gym and see the impact that your last documentary had on us and I aren't doing it to sort of to pull you up yeah. it has, you've seen it with your own eyes I've seen and it the gym got busy because I did a lot of stuff on social media yes. pictures, videos, stuff like that people might have laughed at me at the beginning and stuff but it worked and the gym's busy and now, now I want to take it to the next stage now and that's 
by, and you've been a part of my journey anyway over the yes. last couple of years, but now we're, we're taking it to another level now. Absolutely. And, yeah, now it's focused on the gym and, and the shows coming up. So I think people do need to consider it, definitely. With there's, one thing I do want, there's one thing I do want to do with you yeah. is there's a board just over here in the gym yeah. that's got the fights that are coming up. Yeah. Can we take a look at the board yeah, a second yeah, and take yeah. us over? Yeah. But sometimes, you know, we do these show, these interviews, and they're always stuck in one place, and you're just yeah. sitting in one place, so... Uh, I'm sorry, sorry about the mess. <laughs> so right. No, nobody can see that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about uh, the, the schedule. Yeah, so I, I, um, th these, are, these are the shows we've got lined up. So starting with this, this Saturday, we're in Peterborough. I've got a Freddy, little Freddy fighting, and Aaron. That's his first fight. Aaron is his 14-year-old. He's only just got his medical card. Okay. Um, in order, so then we've got 20th Flo Jack fighting, it's just a skills fight. Yep. Um, he's another one, just it's his first one, so it's good, good experience for him. The next day we're in Hull. Um, Big Josh is everywhere. Yes. He's got he's got uh, his first fight. Noah's fighting again, little Noah and a little little Tyson. Yep. Freddie, Freddie again. He's very active at the moment. He's Freddie. York, we've got Ben fighting. Um, the same week. I think he's, oh yeah, we've got Bailey a couple of days before in yep. Halifax a Thursday night. He's a little warrior, he's Bailey. He's like a little pit bull when he gets fighting. Yep. Next night we've got Ben Sutherland. He's, he's, he's got an unfortunate record. He's had four, won one, lost three, but he's a lot better than his record. Um, okay. The guy just needs to believe in himself a little bit more. Yep. Um, 27th, then the day after, so we're really busy that week. Bailey again. And then Adam, as all uh, his fights, thirty six is Adam, and he's come from the unlicensed scene, and he's giving right. amateur boxing a go. So yeah, uh, then then I think that'll probably be his last one before his home show. We're in Whitby, November 9th with Harry okay. Davis. He out fought in a while, so it'd be nice to get him back out there. Okay, you've got some things up on the board here. Can you talked about this, these these uh, uh, yes, clippings. This, this, this is another side of what I've just been talking about, the the, the promotional side of, of boxing and and getting the amateur fighters out there. Whenever we have, you know, if we if I ever get the chance, you know, to do a write up, I'll send a write up into the local paper. And yeah. The lads are in there; they, they can get noticed then by, by by the local people in the area. Okay. <clears throat> so Jack, um, when you're talking about promotions, yeah. One of the things that I know, I know, people listening to will say, "Ah, oh, you know, but he's only doing it for a quick bob. That's yeah. what it's about, you yeah, know, yeah. you know." Because, let's be honest, I've heard many people say, there's now in boxing. Yeah, you can't yeah. make nothing in boxing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, when I was first starting, every, everyone did say to me, it's hard, you, you won't make anything out of it, and, and blah, blah, blah. But I saw, I saw that I could make a living out of it. I'm not going to make a lot of money out of it. I know I'm not. My girlfriend says to me all the time, you'll never be a millionaire because I'm too, I'm too nice. People come in, they use the gym, and, and yeah. I know I'm not going to make a lot, a lot of money out of it. But I, I want to set it up for these young ones coming through so when one day they can make some money out of it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's other things there's other ways for me to make money and I will do. But for now this is this is earning me a living. It is earning me a living and I think I'm proving people wrong with, with what they told me in the beginning. So why do you think those people said that you wouldn't be successful at it? I don't know, maybe maybe they were scared of uh, trying things for themselves or, or maybe they were just trying to put me off. I d I don't know. Um, and I understand where they're coming from because we do do a lot. We put so many hours in, like boxing coaches. It's like 24/7. It really is. Uh, they don't, you know, we've got a class timetable on wall, but I do a lot more than that. Yeah. Um, Sundays we go off sparring. Friday nights, Saturday night we might be fighting. So tell us, tell us your, just, just tell us your schedule for a week. For, like for a week, a schedule for a week. Give you All your right. typical week. Okay. So uh, Monday, I have I have the daytime off because. That it, that's kind of like my weekend, half a day on a Monday. Yeah. I start at sort of three o'clock, the kids start covering about half past three. Um, I'm in till half past eight. Okay. Start shutting about quarter to nine, get back home. Back up again to do one to ones in the morning, about half past five, six on Tuesday. In the morning? Yeah, yeah. So I'll do one to ones till maybe 11 o'clock. Go home for a couple of hours, um, walk the dog, um, come back. I might have um, Mohammed Saban in to do his strength and conditioning. So. I'll start with him about two, half past two. Then I'm in again until um, about half past eight on Tuesdays. That's with classes and a one-to-one -one to finish with Becky. I've trained her for about two and a half years now at the same time. Wednesday, I leave that one free like Mondays. So I get up, I, tra I train, I do CrossFit, I do uh, early Monday morning, I get up, I train at, at seven. Then I've got all day to sort of do like the admin side of stuff. So answering calls, answering emails, uh, doing the social media stuff. Um, 
matching, so we were getting fights, matched up, yep. and stuff like that. Back in the gym again uh, for about half past three, and then I'll be here till nine again on a Wednesday. Back up again on a Thursday, six in the morning to do one to ones till about eleven. Home, walk the dog. <laughs> Come back, train Mohammed Saban again about 2 o'clock, half past 2, and I'll be in the gym on a Thursday till save again, half past 8, 9. Back up again on a Friday, do my own training at 7, CrossFit, then I'm back, I'm straight down here from CrossFit to start coaching people from 8 o'clock. On a Friday, I can be in here till pretty much all day, till 7 at night. Um, I might get a break in between to go walk the dog, might nip home, depending on how long I've got. Uh, we might have someone fighting on a Friday night, it depends. Saturday morning back in at seven, one to ones, classes then till one, might have one to ones in after, so I might leave about three o'clock on a Saturday, then we could have fighters again, so this Saturday we're in Peterborough, so we're setting off to Peterborough at four, depending on what time we get home, might be early hours. Sunday morning, um, I've got three lads that are on the Yorkshire squad training, on the Yorkshire camp, so I'll be taking them to the Vermont office in Leeds, so that's seven days of the training cave and a boxing coach. <laughs>